These are downspouts to a dry well. I'm going to show you how to do a downspout system to a dry well the right way. We have one downspout here. We take it under the sidewalk. We got a second downspout right here. We wire them together to a main line. We got good slope, we got good fall. But the problem is, water always lays on the surface over here. So, after a rain, we don't really want to see the water hanging around, even if it's just a few hours. We went ahead and we did a dry well. The water's gonna go into a dry well. It's 48 inches deep. This one's 18 inches in diameter. That's the size dry well that we went with. It's only two downspouts and they really aren't responsible for a lot of water. Now this is the key part, this is key. So I asked all the subscribers to tell me in the comments if I should bury the downspouts on this house and you guys told me that it would look better if I buried them and it already looks better to me. So I wanna thank everybody who jumped in the comments, gave me their honest opinion. Now we have this beautiful half round gutter system. We went ahead and we put a leaf filter on this because if we're gonna bury an underground, we wanna filter out all those contaminants, starting with the leaves. All right, Patrick went ahead, ran this line. He has the not quite a 90 right here and he kept that as high up as he can. We went right over top of our open French drain. We have this downspout line running to a Y. Now we're gonna take both of these downspouts to a dry well, and I wanna explain why we're gonna do that. The water is trapped in here. There's really nowhere for it to go. And we dump it out on the surface, it might puddle. So we're gonna take it to a dry well. Both these downspouts are being tied together, and then we're gonna to go to a septic box. The reason why we want a septic box is I wanna clean out the tree buds, the tree seeds, all the things that might float that make it through the leaf filter. I don't want them in our dry well. We wanna make sure that we filter out all the contaminants. The best way to do that is with a septic box. So the guys used the 36 inch auger. Look at how nice that is. Look at that. Perfect dry well hole. Now we're gonna put an 18 inch well I'll show you what that looks like once the men got that hooked up. We have perforations all through the dry well, small holes. We're not going to have stone falling inside it. It's not going to be an issue, but the whole dry well has been perforated. You can see 360 degrees. We got holes all the way around the drywall. We're gonna take you through all the details, the really important details that make a really good drywall. We're gonna show you how to protect your drywall so that it lasts forever. There's a lot of key things that you have to do if you're running downspouts to a drywall. Make sure that you line your drywall pit with a good drainage fabric. You also want to put your drywall in the center of the drywall pit so that you can get stone 360 degrees all the way around the drywall. Vent the cover. That is key. This is the single most important thing when running downspouts to a dry well. If you don't have a D box or a septic box to catch all the debris, your drywall is going to fill up with all the roof pollution 
Everything that comes off the roof is going to end up in the drywall. If you have a really good D box, a really good septic box, where you go in low and come out high, you're going to catch all the debris. So we got a perforated drywall with big inch and a half stone in here. If we're having such a hard rain, if you have two downspouts that overwhelm a drywall, we have all those perforations and the water is going to run out of this into those big stone. If it falls behind because it's been a really long rain, like an all night rain, the drywall ends up full. Right here is where the water vent. Water will come up out of that vent and just run into the lawn. We got enough fall from up there to down here. One more. Good, good. So you always want to have a septic box right before your drywall or leach field when you're running downspouts. Downspouts are filthy, rooftop pollution. I've seen just about anything and everything come off roofs. Whatever blows in the wind or kids can throw up on top. So these are the female couplers. They grab the outside of the pipe. Now there's little holes drilled in this basin. Whatever water's left in that septic box It'll just leach into the subsoil. So we're pouring a bag of pea stone around the septic box and tucking some pea stone underneath the septic box. Whatever water's left in the septic box and the line will leach away. the holes that they drilled you can see the holes in the very bottom there's guides in the bottom of this so it's easy to drill out those holes you don't have to drill those holes too big and as long as you have some pea stone under the catch basin the water that's in the catch basin whatever's left in a septic box will leach away because it'll go into the pea stone and now it can travel in the vein of pea stone and it comes into contact with more soil when you run pea stone under it now if you just put this septic box down without putting pea stone under it, you're gonna have some trouble getting that box to leach all the water that's left in it after a rain event. Remember, you're tied in low, and then you're asking water to climb to come out this discharge line. I don't wanna fill this drywall up with tree buds and tree seeds and all the heavy things that we can filter out of it by using a septic box. So we're gonna dump all inch and a half round rock around this drywall. We're going to take it right to the surface. That way if we have a really hard steady rain that goes on for hours and hours and if this well gets filled, it can just rise up through the stone and get lost in the grass. The big void, that's going to hold more water.
we went in on the bottom part the septic box you come in on the bottom part and you cap off the top part then you do the opposite on this end you cap off the bottom and then you come out the top when you come in low you ask water to rise and come out you lose all the tree seeds tree buds heavy pollutants behind that septic box is going to catch more debris than any other catch basin configuration you can come up with we don't want to fill this dry well with garbage so if you build it right the first time you won't have any issues we vented it so if the perforated dry well can't keep up because it's raining for hours and the dry well maybe fills up let's just hypothetically say the dry well fills up it can happen we have the top vented the water can come out of the four inch grate that's in the top so this is our finished product this is an 18 inch drywall that's 48 inches deep it's got big inch and a half rock around it as it fills up with water it's going to run out the perforations into this big inch and a half round rock and it's going to get absorbed into the subsoil if we have days on end of rain and the subsoil is completely saturated it'll come up in the stone and percolate if we have torrential rains and it's full it'll vent right here if you're doing downspouts to a drywall and you follow all the details that we showed in this video you will have success make sure to have that septic box to catch all the contaminants we want to filter out all the pollutants make sure you use a good non-woven geotextile filter fabric before you put your drywall in also vent your drywall if you found any of this information helpful give us a thumbs up it supports the channel I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.